Hey guys and welcome to Words of Scale. So today I want to talk to you about the recent Google update. I won't be actually telling you <laughs> what the update was since uh, it is all on the Google's website. It's a helpful content update. Uh, the only difference would be that Google is now omitting written by humans from the written by humans for humans part. So, th so this is good news for us who are using AI to generate content. But today I want to talk about something else, uh, basically about future proofing your website or websites from Google updates and what I'm personally doing. Uh, short disclaimer, this is just an opinion. I'm not an SEO guru. I've never pretended to be one. And this is what I'm doing for my pillar websites, not for all of the websites that I own. But this seems to be working for me. So as you can see on the screen, this is uh, one of my major websites, which is trickmenot.ai. And uh, the graph for the past three months suggests that uh, I have, have not been impacted by the recent Google update. Moreover, since I would say August, uh, I've been on an upward trajectory and I will gladly show you my volatility for the recent month. So I used to have this enormous boost or end peak where everybody was talking about ChatGPT and I had a lot of articles written around ChatGPT. Then it was a down, downward spiral. Here I changed my, I improved my web core vitals. So basically I switched a hosting plan and I am now like scoring 100% on mobile. And I had another down, downward spiral and this is where I started producing more content. And I actually don't have that, that much content. So I only have 69 articles across the whole website. And if we go to, and this is a, a very recent website. So if we go 12 months back, as you can see, I started this project uh, in February. So if we go back to February 1, <laughs> there is uh, nothing. So zero clicks, uh, one impression. And then it took me um, probably nine months to get to where I am right now. And as you can see, impression wise, I'm almost at the peak, at the previous peak. So again, I'm not pretending uh, to be to know everything. There is just certain things that I'm doing for this website. And I think this can be attributed to a moderate success that I've had. So 66,000 clicks in total and almost 2 million impressions. So, okay, enough bragging and I, honestly, I don't like to brag. So people will question your expertise all the time, but that doesn't fit with, with me well, <laughs> I don't think. I mean, uh, bragging. So, okay, where is my notes? So how to survive a Google update? So I think there is four pillars. Again, I'm not trying to say that there is only four. It's just a plan for my video, basically, <laughs> what I'm going to talk about. The keyword research is extremely important, and I still think, and many would disagree, that keyword research will supersede or surpass or is more important than actual uh, content. Uh, especially for newbies, especially for beginner websites, because you can have one of the you know most amazing pieces of content written, but if your keyword is not right, you won't get any traffic. And vice versa, if you uh, were able to find an underserved keyword, a long tail keyword, and have written a half decent article, you will get traffic. Then the quality of content, backlinks, and direct traffic, and actually. Uh, this uh, pillar here, which is direct traffic, is what I want to talk about more in this video, but that's going to come in later. So keyword research. People tend to uh, overcomplicate keyword research. And so this is partially because they need to make more content on their YouTube videos or whatnot. And I reduce all of my keyword research to the following. So basically, I'm working with the huge list of keywords, uh, can be a thousand keywords at a time. Uh, I usually pre-filter those keywords, so I'm looking uh, at the keywords uh, usually below 10. Some people will look at keyword below 20, but I think 20 is pretty high for a beginner website. And then what I'll do, I'll apply a filter. And uh, the, two, the, the one filter that I apply all the time is forums, social networks, and basically low KD websites, so low KD. And there is a way to automate it. And uh, as far as this part goes, you can choose whichever tool you like. I use Ahrefs, I've also used Google Keyword Explorer. I've used keywords everywhere. 
And so these are the tools I'm more familiar with, but it doesn't really matter. So whichever tool will give you a huge list of keywords will suffice. And then what I'll do, I'll go to Keyword Chef. Uh, there is another program called Low Fruits, and they both do the same. So we can just so pick any of the pre previous reports that I've had. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe food stamp. That's a good niche. I was actually cont contemplating this niche for a while. And then I just bulk upload everything that has to be, do with uh, food stamps. And I filter the keywords based on the SERPs. So these two have a yellow in them. So this means that there is a PDF on the first page, a Quora on the first page, first two places. Uh, actually, um, this is a Quora ranking on the fourth place and so on and so forth. And the higher the score can go, of course, to 10, I think, the more chances you have to rank. But another tool that I've just fell in love with is Shroud.io. And this is an SEO optimization tool as well. But I'm just loving the low competition keyword finder. So I've had a lot of uh, queries. Um, maybe, uh, what should I show you? Oh, this, this is a good niche actually. So I'm contemplating, um, this is a grant review of sorts, because <laughs> I'm contemplating uh, on uh, launching a website in a marriage slash relationship niche. So what I did, I just uh, went, uh, what does my partner here as a head term? And then it works the same as Keyword Chef, but uh, I like it even more. So there is a lot of opportunities here. Let me adjust the score. Yeah. So as you can see, we have a lot of keywords where Reddit and Quora and forums are occupying first positions and also websites with DA below 10. So a lot of opportunities here. And I like this too, because you can just go here, choose the high and medium serve score, and you got yourself a list of 68 keywords that you can rank for like right now. And this is basically what I do for the keyword research with one exception. So this is like approach number one. This is my general approach. Then the second approach would be just to go for the keywords that I know will rank for and I just go for it. And I don't use any uh, keyword tools for that. This comes from experience and this also comes uh, from uh, understanding the niche. One of the examples uh, is when GPT-4 just came around, I immediately wrote an article called uh, Can GPT-4 Pass AI Detection? And I've occupied the first place. Uh, oh, I'm actually still in the first place. So can GBD4 pass AI detection? This is my article. And I wrote like, like a, a while ago, March 18. And I haven't updated this article. So March 18 is when I wrote this article. And I am uh, on the first place. And below me is the likes of originality and uh, other websites. So this is the second approach. And the third approach would be the one that I like the most. I don't know why, it just brings me satisfaction of sorts. Is when I think I have recorded an article worthy YouTube video, I will just convert that article, that YouTube video to an article. And I have a lot of examples. How to write a 2000 word article or 25,000 word article, I forget. Article with bin. And I'm not sure if this is the, yeah. So how to write an article with Bing chat. And this is the keyword that I used. And uh, I'm getting quite a lot of traffic uh, for to this article here. So how to write an article with Bing chat. And as you can see, right, it's on the second place. So this is a lower competition keyword, but still this gives me traffic. And this is just an one of the examples of how I turned a YouTube video into, into an article. And if we actually open up this article here, you will see my embedded video here. So this is the video that I turned into the article. And that's it. So I'm basically using three approaches to, to uh, for my keyword research, and they're extremely simple. There are no brainers, so to speak, but they do work for me. Now, the second question is about quality of content. And I think this deserves like a separate video that talks about, you know, what to write in your intros, how to deliver 
uh, or address the search intent, how to do interlinking, how to do SEO optimization. But uh, here I just want to answer the lifelong question, uh, which is, is AI content ranking or and how much of AI content you're using on your main website? So my test websites are 100% AI. My trick me not website, I would say it's um, around 33%. It's human written. So this is human written. But another 33% is uh, GPT-4. And I'm using GPT-4 mainly for turning YouTube videos and i would say 33 and maybe maybe more maybe 40 uh, percent this will not add up to 100 obviously but maybe 40 percent is a more accurate number and this will be ai generated and i am using agility writer for all of those articles it's not that i didn't want to test other ai writers it's just uh, i love um, article agility writer and i don't see a lot of merit to switching your AI writers all the time. So this is 100% agility writer and it just passes my uh, general curiosity tests. So I'm not actually formatting them um, that heavily. And this is for, for the quality of content. So AI content, I would say this is around 70% and 30% is human written. Okay, next, next backlinks. So for the backlinks, I don't do a lot and I do not consider myself a, a guru in backlinking. So I basically do two things. I create tools which do attract backlinks and I have a video on that. And then I buy backlinks and I haven't bought a lot of backlinks. Uh, the guy is called Sekat Fahi and he's got a, uh, a website in the same name. And when it comes to tools, one thing that I uh, should mention. So tools like uh, Turnitin Score Estimator. So if you enter your uh, continent scale score, say 50, you'll get an estimated percentage uh, for Turnitin. And tools like uh, the recent edition is AI Picker. <laughs> this is a fun one. So I basically uh, analyze 15 of the popular AI tools. And these are levers. Uh, so if you were to say that your biggest priority is price, for example, uh, the lower the cheaper, uh, you get uh, three picks, which are ChatGPT, Cloud, and ZimRider. And if uh, price was not a factor and you wanted uh, a lot of SEO optimization in a bulk mode and images, then you would get Agility Writer and SEO Writing in Koala. If uh, nothing of that is interesting to you uh, and you wanted to have keyword research capabilities, you would get search graph, mango, SEO, and chat GPT. So this is how it works. And finally, finally, so the uh, most important thing that I think allowed me to survive multiple Google updates is the amount of direct traffic. And by direct traffic, I mean social media support. I will not lie. And, but social media support is overestimated. So if you go to my performance and look at the queries, uh, trickme.ai uh, is uh, number two. But if you divide that by 66,000, it's going to be less than 3%, I think. So not a lot. But uh, due to the nature of social media traffic and uh, the fact that my website gets bookmarked a lot and uh, I have tools that are associated with the website, I'm still getting a lot of traffic for just the uh, domain. So this is the, these are not my main performing pages, not by far. Uh, but again, this kind of... Uh, future proves me and save gates me as far as uh, future volatility goes. And if we go back to uh, the tools, so this tool here, which is Torrent Score Estimator, I think it's uh, top five as far as my traffic goes. And if uh, you know my other website, which I am developing, which is called nichescout.pro, I have like a plethora of different tools. I have a niche generator, which you can press and get a hold of uh, 301 hand-picked niches and each niche goes with overview advantages and strategy and you can get different niches each and every time then you have niches directory 
which will be growing very soon. You have uh, the niche medium quiz. This is uh, for you to choose your preferred medium. This is money method quiz. And all these uh, tools uh, bring in traffic. Uh, all these tools uh, contribute to my website being bookmarked. And uh, they track backlinks. And this is basically what I'm recommending. So if you have this pillar website that you are very proud of and that uh, you, you want to last, you just do uh, everything that we discussed. You do a keyword research uh, the right way. You write quality content with the correct AI tools. You track backlinks, but then you're making sure you get a lot of direct traffic. And direct traffic is social media support and tools. And for social media, it doesn't have to be YouTube. It can be faceless YouTube. It could, could be Pinterest, it could be Instagram, Twitter, whatever. It could be email list as well. And this is not on the list, <laughs> but email email list and I do have an email list uh, is another uh, great way to ensure that you get consistent traffic and tools so this would be the three pillars uh, to offset any of the future Google updates so if you have these three I wouldn't say you are you're foolproofed but uh, you have a very good fighting chance against uh, the competition and the Google updates and again, for me, uh, for my newer website, which only launched in February, I think the results speak for themselves and they are pretty good. So hopefully you found some value in this video. Like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.